Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the upgrading our Dino Smashers Fury structure decks. Um, I guess this is episode two, if you want to call it episodes, I don't know. But uh, this is going to be our second upgrade to it. Uh, as you can see, I haven't touched anything since last time. Uh, we're going to work with the same budget, about $35, but this time we're going to assume you've done okay at your locals. Maybe not great, maybe not absolutely horrible. But we're going to be a little modest here. We're just going to say maybe you got like $5 in credit. And then maybe pulled some things from the OTS. But we're not going to use any of the OTS cards in this. So I've worked out another uh, set of upgrades. This time we're going to work with about $40 considering that credit. So here we go. So here's our deck here. There are a few things I wanted to change. First off, I'm going to add in effect veilers. Now, these just, as of recording this, the uh, Charmer Structure Deck just came out, and these are like a dollar, like dollar fifty for the cheapest effect veilers. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just gonna get rid of all this stuff down here in the side deck. So with this one, we're going to sure up some things in our main deck, which is also going to end up moving stuff into our side deck, and we're going to get that solidified, and then we're going to finish up our extra deck, and then we should have a pretty coherent deck by the end of this. And hopefully, after the next couple upgrades, we can focus on getting some more of the expensive things. So I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put three effect veiler in here. Now I want to keep this at 40 cards, so we're gonna take some things out. First off, we're just gonna cut one of the Dino Wrestlers here. We're only gonna play one. Uh, I don't think we need two. And then we're gonna move these two DD Crows. Uh, we're gonna move them to the side deck because I think effect veiler is just a better hand trap. But this does have some uses. You could use in your side deck. And then the next thing we're going to do is he got a little cheaper because of the gold series. Uh, we're going to run two Nibirus. So we're going to put him in here. So he's about like $7.50 each as the time of recording this for the gold series one. So we're going to put him in here and we're going to take out the two Book of Eclipses and we're just going to move those to the side deck because those still could be helpful in the side deck. And then after that, we're going to add just a couple more things here. Uh, we're going to get True King Lithosagem. So you can only play him at one. Uh, what he does is if he's in your hand, you can destroy two other monsters in your hand or face up on your field. And then you have to do at least one Earth monster. And then if you do, he special summons himself. And if you use both, if both of the monsters were Earth monsters, you get to look at your opponent's extra deck and banish three monsters with different names from it. So the good thing about him is the, all the baby Cerasauruses and Petit Pteranodons, they're all Earth. And so is Giant Rex, Pancratops, and this Dino Wrestler. So we can uh, we can throw him in here pretty easily. And even if we're not playing like Dragonic Diagram and actually other True King cards, he's just a very nice card to kind of destroy our babies until we can get Arcasaur. So I'm just going to take out the Megalith Smasher here, and we're just going to throw in one Lithosagem. He is like 10... He's like 10 cents. He's a rare in Toon Chaos. Uh, he's pretty easy to get, so he wouldn't be too hard. Uh, and then the last card we're going to throw in the main deck is Called by the Grave. It also just got reprinted in the Gold series. The cheapest one's like 80 cents. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut... Uh, well, we're going to move the Red Reboot from our main deck into the side deck, and then we're going to put the Called by the Grave there. Because the red reboot's pretty specific if we're facing trap decks, which we can side that in if we need it. So that's it for the main deck. Uh, that's all we're going to do to it right now. We have a pretty good start. We got better hand traps. Uh, we have a better enabler. The, really, all we can do from here is just Arcasaur, um, Droplets, Impermanence, those sort of things. That's really all we could go from here with the main deck. So the main deck's just done. Oh, like Extravagance, if we ever get to that. So the extra deck, we're going to fill this up. We've got six spots, so we're going to go Pentastag. He's a very good, ge pretty generic, takes two effect monsters, uh, link two. So what he does is he gives the thing he points to uh, piercing, so you can attack with Ultimate Conductor underneath the Pentastag, like into your Lost World token, and you'll deal um, 3,500 damage, which is nice. So we're going to put him in there. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to do... A few of the nightmares. We're gonna do one nightmare phoenix. Uh, nightmare phoenix is five dollars. Also, pentastag is a dollar fifty. Oh no, dollar twenty. I'm sorry. He's a dollar twenty, so he shouldn't be too hard to get. 
Uh, Nightmare Phoenix, it's uh, another generic Link 2. It just takes two monsters with different names. Uh, when it's Link summoned, you discard a card, then you target one spell and trap on your opponent's field and destroy it. And then if he's co-linked, you get to draw a card, which might not happen that much, but we have some arrows to do that. So this is just another... This and Tornado Dragon are just another way to just kind of deal with spells and traps because dinosaurs have a decently hard time with that. And he is five dollars i think he's the most expensive thing in this wave of upgrades besides nibiru so he's a little spendy but he's really worth it and if you ever make a different deck he pretty much goes in any deck then we're also going to play nightmare uh cerberus he takes the same requirements as phoenix and then uh what he does is you discard a card and then you target a special summon monster in the main monster zone and destroy it and then also if he's co-linked you draw a card so he helps you get rid of some uh things some like good monsters your opponents might have but also, he can help you try and pop your own Lost World tokens if you go first to try and get things going. So that's nice. And then uh, we have a few more XC monsters, and then we'll have this all finished up. We're going to put number 41. Oh, and then Cerberus is a dollar, so he's not too expensive. Uh, then we have number 41, Baguska, the terribly tired tapir. He just takes two level fours. Uh, when he's in attack position, he can't be destroyed by card effects. That's not that important. Um, but when he's in defense, all monster, all face-up monsters on the field are switched to defense and also negate the activated effects of all monsters that were in defense when their effects were activated. So if you have to go first, you can kind of sit on this guy and try and mess your opponent up. He doesn't work on link monsters because they can't go to defense, but everything else he's pretty good at. So we're going to throw him, and he is, let's see on my list here, he is a dollar twenty-five ish for the cheapest one. Then the last rank four we're gonna put is number one hundred three Ragna Zero. So it takes two level four monsters, and then once per turn during either player's turn, so you can do this on your opponent's turn too. You can detach from this and then target one face-up attack position monster that your opponent controls, whose attack is different than its original attack, and then you destroy that monster. And then if you do, you draw a card. So if Lost World's on the field, everything that's not a dinosaur is going to have 500 less attack, so therefore it's not going to be its original attack. So you can, if you have Lost World and you're going first, you can make this and have an interruption on your opponent's turn. If for whatever reason you didn't want to make Laggy or Dulka, or if you had already used Laggy and Dulka. And then the final XC monster we're going to play is a big one. Uh, Super Dreadnought Railcan and Gustav Max. Oh, uh, Ragna Zero is $1.50 for like the cheapest. So the last one we're going to use is Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. I'm going to say the price now so I stop forgetting. He is 50 cents for like the cheapest. Uh, what he does is he just takes two level 10s, so our ultimate conductors here. Once per turn, detach one from him, deal 2,000 damage to your opponent. So if you get double ultimate conductor and you somehow don't kill them and they're 2,000 or lower life points, you can overlay into this guy and just kill them with the burn damage. So we're going to put him in there. There we go. We've got 15 cards in the extra deck. It's not like the most competitive 15 cards in the extra deck you could have, but that's because we're just kind of starting off small. And like I said, we don't have Arcosaur yet. This changes a lot once we get Arcosaur, depending on which direction we want to go. And if we start going more in the True King route, this also changes a little bit. But for now, this is pretty solid. This will, this will, all these things will help you in some way at some point. So that's it for the extra deck. Now our side deck, as you can see, we've already added five cards to it just by moving stuff from the main deck. But what we're going to do is we're going to just get some cheaper, some more cheaper hand traps. They're pretty, pretty useful. We're going to get three Artifact Lancia. He's like 20 cents per copy for the cheapest one, from what I could see. Uh, what he does is during your, your opponent's turn, you can uh, send him to the graveyard, either from your hand or field. So if you get him on field somehow, you can do this too. And then this for the rest of this turn, neither player can banish cards. So if you're facing like another dinosaur deck, this could hurt them because you do a lot of banishing. Any deck that does a lot of banishing, this is a really good card for. And then the next thing we're going to do is Token Collector. So he's a little more of an obscure uh, hand trap. He, seems some, he has seen some play here and there. He is like 25 cents per copy. And uh, what he does is if a token is special summoned, except during the damage step, you can special summon him from your hand or graveyard. So even if you've used him already, 
and then you can only use this that you can only use that effect of him once per turn. And then if he is special summoned, you destroy as many tokens on the field as possible, and then he gains attack or whatever. And then while he's on field, neither player can special summon tokens. So why he's good is because there's a lot of decks right now that like to make Link Cross and Aurora Dawn and stuff, and they make a bunch of tokens, and he can just stop that. And he can be in your hand or your grave. The second reason he's really good, as I put him in here, is because we make our own tokens that we want to destroy. So if he's in your hand, and you have Lost World, and you summon a dinosaur, he can summon himself, attempt to destroy the token, and then you can protect it with Lost World. And he's a level 4 Earth, so you can use him to make most of our rank 4s here, and then get him in Grave, and then you can use him again later. And he's a non-dinosaur, so it makes our double evolution pills live. So he's kind of specific to what he's good against, but there are a lot of things you're going to face that he is good against, and he just so happens to have a very good utility for us ourselves. And he's also very cheap, so we're just going to fill the side deck with him. Next one we're going to do is we're going to do two Ghost Ogre. So thanks to Maximum Gold, this has gotten a little bit cheaper. Uh, there's a lot of different versions you can get. Uh, it's Ghost Ogre is like two fifty a piece for the cheapest, I believe. And we're just going to get two of them. Uh, it's a hard once per turn, so you don't want to draw a bunch of them. And it's just another really good hand trap to play to help disrupt your opponent and give you a non-dinosaur to work with for the double evolution pill. And the very last thing, we have two spots left, the very last thing we're going to play is Forbidden Chalice. So, it's not as good as Forbidden Droplets, but we're not playing with the budget for that right now. Right now, we'll see. So what it does is you just target one face-up monster on the field until the end of this turn, it gains 400 attack, but its effects are negated. So why is that important? Well, it's a quick play that just targets and negates. So if someone has something like, say, Abyss Dweller, which we might have trouble playing through an Abyss Dweller, we can chain this to the Abyss Dweller to target it and negate it at any point, as long as we have this card in our hand. <clears throat> and if someone makes you go first, you can set this, and this is a pretty decent, okay um, piece of interaction you can do on your opponent's turn. So uh, that's it. We've used about $38.20 of our $40 range. Uh, once you throw tax and stuff in, we're probably a little over the 40 but it just depends. Um, you might be able to find some of these things just in your bulk boxes at your, local, at your locals or something like that. One thing you could consider, uh, which I'm actually going to do, is I'm going to move the Ghost Ogres into the main deck. And I'm going to move the Twin Twisters into the side deck. That way, if you face a really trap-heavy deck, you have really good side cards for it. But And if you don't, you have a lot of really good main deck ways. So there you go. Uh, this is a pretty solid deck now, I would say. It looks pretty similar to how dinosaurs used to look before Archosaur came out. I mean, we still have a few little techy things like this guy, which eventually might just find their way out in like, the survival's end. But um, from here, we can pretty much start focusing on getting like Archosaur, like Ash Blossoms, those more expensive kind of, maybe Impermanences, we'll see. But I think uh, this one will, this deck will do pretty well for you, I think. I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to go win your locals every time, but I think you'll have a pretty good fighting chance even just with this. And that's only after two upgrades, so after two upgrades we've got it pretty solid and then we can start really kind of getting it up into like the tier one status. So uh, that's it. If you uh, if you like the video, please like the video and comment and subscribe to Scoop Phase if you want to see upgrade number three eventually. And then um, if you haven't for some reason seen upgrade number one already, you can go watch that. Uh, we also have a more kind of competitive, traditional, just out of the like straight up dinosaur deck. You can go watch the Scoop Scoop Phase episodes for that, or like the building process for that. They'll be somewhere you can find them. Uh, anyways, I'm scooping now. Uh, goodbye, everybody.